Today, on this second Sunday of Advent, we gather to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Christ child, to expectantly wait for all that it is that God is showing us through history and through our continued walk of faith. We are glad that you're here joining in worship today. We invite you to go to the description of this video where you can find a link to the bulletin for today so you may actively participate. Also, during our service today, we will celebrate Holy Communion. So please have your elements ready if you choose to partake in this Holy Sacrament. Let us now prepare ourselves to continue to reflect on the, the love of God that comes to us not only at Christmas, but each day. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the first Sunday of Advent is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare a way up for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out, and I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up. Do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs into his arms and carry them in his bosom. And gently he will lead the mother sheep. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel for the second Sunday of Advent according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, 
with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Grace and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What shall I cry? That question was part of our reading today. I think another way of translating that phrase would be, what shall I say? And that is a question that ponders and occupies my mind quite frequently, at least once a week, because every week you expect me to to get up in front of you and, and to say some insightful or wise reflection of the scripture readings for the day. And there are times where I sit down and I pour over the scriptures and I have to be honest, I struggle to find an answer to that question of what shall I say. I'm left completely speechless. I know, I know, a pastor speechless. We've never heard of such a thing, but it does happen. In fact, it happened with Isaiah as well. He hears a voice that tells him to cry out. And Isaiah responds, what shall I cry? Isaiah is left speechless. But it's not just with pastors and it's not just with prophets that the situation arises where an individual is left speechless. No, you've probably experienced it as well. I think of the parent who has a child come up to them and ask the question, where do babies come from? Uh Uh-oh might be a speechless moment there. I think of the teacher who's working with the child to try to understand multiplication for the first time and the child is just struggling and is not grasping it whatsoever. And after pouring out all the possible words and directions that are there, the teacher finds themselves speechless. I think of the two friends who come with two very different views of the world and all of a sudden the conversation turns to one of those hot topic issues. And as one shares their viewpoint, the other one sits there, unsure of how to respond, left speechless. Yeah, those moments, they come into our world, and they are quite common. And it's caused me to pause and to reflect a little bit on why it is that we experience this phenomena of being left speechless. And I think I've boiled it down to two particular contributors to us being left without words. The first are there are moments that have the power to leave us speechless. Yes. Did you know that Christmas is less than 20 days away? Uh Uh-oh. Uh-oh. There's lots of things to do, lots of things that 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 brings up. But for me, I have to say, it brings up the idea of needing to shop for gifts because I really, really try to find gifts for people that, that are really useful and fit them in the regards to their personality or their needs. I really enjoy trying to find the perfect gift for someone. And I know when I've accomplished it because I'll give it to them and they'll open it up and they'll be left speechless. Yes, not the speechless that means, uh, what is this? Or the speechless of, oh boy, I don't know what to say because I don't like it. No, the other speechless, the speechless that just cannot express appreciation and thoughtfulness in, in with words. Yes, that is what I aim for. And there are moments that do leave us speechless when we've received great gifts. But there's also other moments that leave us speechless where words seem to fail. For instance, moments of great tragedy or sorrow or pain. Yes, in those moments, the, the depth of anguish is far beyond what words can express. And then the other end of the spectrum, moments of joy and bliss where words fail to capture that which seems to be leaping from your your chest. Yes, those moments, they have a power to leave us speechless because in those moments, oftentimes words fail to capture all, all that that moment is stirring in us. But there's another type of moment or contributor that that leaves us speechless. And that's the recognition 
of the weightiness of our words. Yes, words, they have power. We've experienced that power. Words, they can help and words, they can harm. And sometimes we're in those situations where you have to have the absolute right words to allow yourself to communicate accurately what you want to say, but to not to deviate or be misunderstood. And you know the weightiness of accidentally saying the wrong thing. You know that there's going to be ramifications or repercussions for it. And so you sit there and you sift through the entire vocabulary that's kept in your head and you just can't find the right words in the right order to express what you want to say. And in that moment, you're left speechless speechless because you don't want to say the wrong thing but it's here where i think in our gospel lesson today i found a shortcut or a cheat code that allows you to always respond to that question of what shall i say so that you'll never be left speechless again okay are you ready for it it's found in the gospel and i think it's it's articulated well through the life of john the baptist john the baptist it's a fascinating character for me not just because of what he wore with the camel's hair and his diet of locusts with honey but no he's a fascinating character because he's a character of humility and fervor for God. He is continually pointing with his life to one word, and that word is Jesus. Yes, he shouts that word with his actions and with his own speech, and he does it throughout the entirety of his varied life. Yes, John had ups and downs in his life. He had great times great times where he had accumulated a great following and, and, and had some level of acclaim. These are good moments. And in those moments, when asked the question, what shall I say? John, John drew on the name Jesus and found inspiration there to carry on the mission moving forward. Yes, yes, John responded to the question of what shall I say by pointing to Jesus by saying Jesus. And then in difficult times, in trying times, like the times when he was imprisoned or persecuted, what did John do in the midst of that great sorrow? How did he respond to the question of what shall I say? Well, he, he again turned back to that same word, Jesus, and in that word found great hope. Yes, for John, the answer is always the same, Jesus. And likewise for us, in any situation, when asked for a response to that question of what shall I say, we can follow the example of John and use the name Jesus. John actually discovered what scientists seem to be discovering now. In their book, Words Can Change Your Brain, doctors Andrew Newborn and Mark Waldman they share their findings about how holding on to in your brain one positive word can actually re in your brain physiologically reduce stress. I think we could all use a little bit of stress reduction right now. There's been times of high stress over the last few months and now on top of it all the pressures and challenges of the Christmas holiday stacked on top of it. A holiday of great joy but one that often is accompanied by higher levels of stress. Yeah, I think we could all use a little bit of a stress reduction and what we're told here is that we can follow the example of John and hold on to that name of Jesus, the reason for this whole season and in it, find our brains being changed. In it, find our stress being reduced as we reflect on all the things that Jesus brings of hope, of love, of Emmanuel accompaniment, God who walks with us through every moment. Yes, when asked, what shall I say? We can always respond with that name, that word Jesus, and find our lives being in a better place. Place. But not only that, 
there's more to the findings because what the doctors found is that also holding on to a positive or optimistic word didn't only change an individual's brain, but it also inspired them into positive action so that they might change the real world in which they live. Yes, holding on to positive words like the name of Jesus inspires us to respond to the needs of the world with positive change, with the positive change that Jesus asks, the positive change that comes as we strive to faithfully love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. The positive change that comes as we strive to live into our identity as God's beloved children, created in God's image, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and in need of God's grace. Yes, we can continually answer the call to cry out and the question of what shall I say by screaming with our words and with our actions the name of Jesus and thus be agents of hope and justice, of joy and peace and love in our world. Yes, we can change the world with one word. We can change the world just as God changed the world with the same word, Jesus. There is power. There is power in that word, Jesus. John knew that power, and we are invited to know that power as well. It's a word that can reduce stress as we are brought, made mindful of God's care for us now and always, of God's care for the world now and always. It's a word that can inspire us, strengthen us to be part of God's work and to see this world transformed with the good news of Jesus Christ. So may you, May you know that name. May that name, above all other words, find its way into your mind, into your daily work. May that name dwell in you now and always so that as you continue to answer countless times over the course of a day that question of what shall I say, you can always respond with words and actions that cry out the name of Jesus. Because that word, that name of Christ ensures that in any and all situations, you will never be left entirely speechless. Amen. God's people of today, we join with the saints of all times and all places confessing our common faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As God's people, we gather to bring God our concerns that weigh on our hearts and our minds. And today we pray for those who've experienced hospitalization, illness, or other challenge this last week, or have such challenges on the horizon. Today we pray for Chuck Kraut, Hector Gutierrez, Nancy Swingle, Carol Glywa, Ruth Sava, Lisa Jeremoska, Connor Mish, Chris Yazumbek, Matt Hussar, Sandy Sant, Sue Albrecht, Betty Holke, Bob Schaff, Sandra Reback, Richard Wolf, Shar Wolf, Susan Miskovic, Gloria Ochinisky, Laura Dolsky, Kim Meski, Kristen Bain, Kim Williams, Donna Lawler, Eric Mayers, Ron Kelly, Marilyn Kinstead, Gretchen Bishop, Paul Berger, Bob Flam, Dale Cook, Don Knights, Joe Bowie, Elaine Girton, Crispin Bowfinger, Samantha King, Joan Rauch, Violet Fywig, Leon Elward, Daniel Shilney Jr., Megan Ebby, Richard Scott, Otis Vinson, Elizabeth Johnson, Mark McCormick, Doris Reuter, Janet Hargarden, Dan Credit, and Kim Beckman. We also keep in our prayers the Dinkmeyer family upon the passing of, of Bob Dinkmeyer, a charter member of our congregation. We do celebrate in our prayers today the, the marriage of Sarah Shook and Cameron Meyer, and also the baptism of young Freya Hammerberg. We also lift up in our prayers those who serve our country and our communities. God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith, the faith of those in Coronationville, and the faith of all your people as we discern and enact your mission. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Be with those who serve our country and our community. Guide their efforts according to your will. Return those who are away home safely and sustain their families as they serve us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth. Make even the disparities between your people. Sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities. Accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely. Tend those who are sick or struggling with depression and gather all your people in your healing embrace. We pray especially for Chuck, Hector, Nancy, Carol, Ruth, Lisa, Connor, Chris, Matt, Sandy, Sue, Betty, Bob, Sandra, Richard, Char, Susan, Gloria, Laura, Kim, Kristen, Kim, Donna, Eric, Ron, Marilyn, Gretchen, Paul, Bob, Dale, Don, Joe, Elaine, Crispin, Samantha, Joan, Violet, Leon, Daniel, Megan, Richard, Otis, Elizabeth, Mark, Doris, Janet, Dan, Kim, and the family and friends of Bob. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God, we give thanks for the way that your love comes into this world. Your love through the uniting of two people, 
like Sarah and Cameron, continue to guide and strengthen them in their marriage that it may reflect the desire that you have for us all, a desire to know us in a way that replicates the love you've shared through Jesus Christ. Continue to guide and strengthen young Freya as she enters the body of Christ. May she know the hope and promises that are found through Jesus and also know the spirit that moves her and inspires her and helps her to grow in her faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you now and always. May you know that peace. May that peace wash upon you. And may that peace reduce your stress and bring you hope during this season of Advent. Now is the time in our service where we would usually collect our offering. We give thanks for the ongoing generosity shown by many of you. We invite you to continue in this faithful practice of stewardship, mailing in your offering to the church or, or signing up for electronic giving. If neither of those avenues are accessible to you, then consider where God is at work around you and get involved, participate, or contribute so that God's mission and work may be known in ways that are very real. If this is a time where you are struggling, where you are in need of the help that God's people can provide, then please contact us here at the church as we have resources and are happy to help extend God's love during the approach of the Christmas season. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer that through these gifts the world would receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drinks, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we share of this meal, we remember Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for me. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ for me. Now, may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and forever keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord's face shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.